Welcome back, everybody. Episode 36 of the Roadie Rumble. Montana Friselli. No Adam Bernstein with me tonight. But uh, we have a great guest on, Faith Hutchins. She is a roadie soccer player, former SK Rebel. Uh, my best friend. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Doing well. It's a long day, exam week, but... For sure. We're for driving. sure we're getting through it you have any exams today i had one yesterday and then i got two on monday so tough ones back to back so i'll be in here for a little while but. In. so uh you know we want to start off with you know talking a little bit about you and your journey you know faith was probably one of the most athletic people you know to ever grace the halls of south kingstown high school um a three-sport <laughs> athlete and it all started back in a SK youth sports. So talk about that. You know, what did you play growing up? You know, what was your, you know, your go-to, what was your favorite sport? And, and you know, you were in a unique situation where you had to play with your sister, uh, Sam, a lot. So, um, you know, talk a little bit about your, your youth sporting career. Yeah. So funny story. I, uh, growing up, I did this track series over at Narragansett. And um, that was when I was like, seven or eight and this woman that was there I'd always do the uh, 100 meter and I'd get like first every time and she was like she talked to my parents and she was like oh you gotta get you gotta get faith into soccer she's got some speed right so then I started soccer and I ended up being a striker for up until I was like 15 and then coming into my freshman year I there were I remember everyone was telling me you can go D1, Faith, you can go D1. And like, I was coming from mid, middle school and I was like, shit, I like, I don't, I don't even know what D1 is. Like, what is that? Right? <laughs> and so I was fortunate and ended up um, starting varsity throughout my freshman year, which was pretty cool. It was a good experience. Um, but, and then it's led me to where I am now with soccer. Uh, as for the other sports, um, basketball, honestly, don't recall how that started. Um, I think it was just something that's gone through the family just with softball and my dad and stuff and uh, it's something he enjoyed and honestly I had so much fun playing that sport it was hard it was probably the hardest sport to let go of um, other than playing pickup games with a with a men's soccer team here but those are fun times um, but yeah I say basketball was a sport where like I really found myself uh, overall in general uh, the, the pace of the game was something that kept, kept me focused and and just wanting to play more and more every time mm -hmm. uh, in terms of softball my family is a big baseball family my grandpa was the coach at SK uh, my dad coached at SK they both coached legion and um funny story with that mm -hmm. me and Sam my sister my dad was like oh I'm signing you guys up for softball you know the age when you're standing in the outfield picking the flowers and the grass and me and my sister, we were at PCL Middle School when he was signing us up. And we were just crying. We were like, no, we don't want to play. None of our friends play. We don't want to do this. And he looked at us and was like, you know what? I'm going to sign you up and you guys are going to enjoy it. <laughs> and <laughs> honestly, it was probably one of one of the best things he could have done for us. And we've, at least me personally, I've learned so much through that sport. Um, and just in general, knowing that every sport's a team game and and given everything you're all when you're out out there, uh, I'd say it was it was difficult to lose those two sports at the competitive level for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of decisions had to come in the future um, for me. But yeah, that's what I got. That's the story of the game. I mean, every athlete at, at some point in their life has to stop doing whatever they do, you know, for move sure. on to whatever the next chapter is, whether you're still playing, you know, one of the sports or not. But, um, you know, where where did you start to grow into that comfort zone where you were like, OK, you know, this is my best sport. This is my middle sport. You know, this is my worst sport, so to say. I mean, I wouldn't say worse because you were stud at every single one that you uh, put the uniform on since like Curtis. Did you start as a seventh grader at Curtis Corner? 
Um, I think it depended on the game. Honestly, that was like five years ago. I can't, I can't remember, but I, I had some playing time. Yeah. Seventh grade. Um, mm-hmm. I think so. So. <laughs> and so you get to high school and you know, you're named a, a starter in soccer and you know, you're on the varsity squads for both basketball and softball and, and talk a little bit about, you know, that year in particular, because I know that there was, you know, especially success with the basketball um you know part of it but also soccer was good and you know softball was starting to build at that point so talk about a little bit about how you came in young but you know a very a very nurtured athlete and and growing into your own on either the court or the field and and how you were able to bring your game to the team and help elevate it to the next level yeah i mean you always hear from people leaving high school and they're like you know cherish every moment uh, it's going to go by fast and that's that's a true statement but if i look back at least personally on myself i can see how much i personally grew throughout those four years mm-hmm. and my comfort level not even just my comfort level but my confidence throughout the years grew tremendously like coming in my freshman year um i was 13 coming into my freshman year i'm young for my class and it you know, I, I looked up to so many girls, especially on the soccer team, being the first season coming in the fall sport. And I, every single game, I had so many nerves coming coming in. And I remember I had uh, one captain on the team who always had my back. And honestly, I looked up to her tremendously. And that influenced me for the, for the future, uh, my future years at SK to um, like, provide a backbone to the team, be a true leader and do whatever I can to make the team successful and my teammates success, my teammates success, teammates successful, (laughs) (laughs) teammates successful, not only in the athletic part and physical part, but mentally and just being good people just overall and in general. Mm -hmm. So that is like, that's something that I think I not just improved on, but was successful at, at the high school. So, mm-hmm. and it, it's, I mean, we won softball my, my junior year. Fortunately, mm-hmm. COVID hit my senior year, the second half. So I didn't have the opportunity to compete that spring season, but, mm-hmm. you know, back to back to back shifts there. Mm-hmm. It was pretty nice. It's not, not something you see 24 uh, seven. And I know we're in a small state over here, but, um, yeah. You know, it's, it's tough to just do that in general uh, with mm-hmm. the competitiveness that there is in Rhode Island. So mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. And, and you continue through high school. I know personally you had a lot of success, you know, being named to all state teams as an underclassman, all division teams as an all underclassman. And, you know, did you feel a lot of pressure as you got older, you know, to keep performing at that high level or did that confidence really grow and, and you understood the game a little bit more? you know, your ability as a player and were you able to, you know, step out in the field and say, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, I trust my training. I trust exactly what I do every single day at practice. And, you know, the probably the most important part is that you trust the people around you. I know that, you know, South King sounds a, a small tight knit community. So, you know, do you think that the chemistry that, you know, you girls had, you know, really paid off, you know, when it came to playing games? Um, honestly, I think, When, for me, coming into uh, personally a confidence level over those years, I think it's something that you learn from other people around you. Um, I think obviously skill comes with it and, and just working hard day in and day out to, for not just you to feel that, but for your teammates to see you as that type of person. Mm -hmm. So I also think obviously the person I've become is because of my family and my parents and how I was raised and I can thank them a million times for that. But I think being not even just named like a captain for those years that I was the two years, my junior and senior year, but it just shows how everyone around you can look up to you and can see you as a leader, um, not just on the field, but off as well or on the court Mm -hmm. it's and it's something that you kind of feel inside so it it doesn't just like come to anyone but you can just feel it 
I, I can't really describe it, but you mm-hmm. can feel it from from your, the environment you're in. So yeah, yeah, and, and you know that definitely showed with you know success in every single sport that you played. I meant you have two championships, um, you know, one in soccer, one in softball. You know, multiple Final Four appearances, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. you know, your freshman year, I remember you guys making it. Um, and then again, when we were seniors, you guys also made it, or when I was a senior, so you were a junior, um, yeah. 2019 season, you know, talk a little bit just about, you know, that success level and, and if that's helped you when it's come to the college game and, you know, as you moved forward in high school, you know, that, that taste of winning, you know, like yeah. how sweet does it actually taste and, you know, and how sour is losing? Yeah. So I was never one of the kids who, you know, played on these top teams uh, outside of school and traveled around the country. You know, I stayed local because I was trying to play as much as I could um, in the time that I had playing three sports. I didn't have enough time to travel across the country. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think it wasn't just that for me, but getting that feel or not getting it, but feeling that community um, sort of vibe kind of, gave me the determination and confidence to, to succeed at those high levels. Um, forgot what you asked at the second, second half of that. I was getting there. What did you say? That sense of winning, you know, how the sense how of winning, that, getting there. Getting yeah, how there. That so, to win, you know, kind of propelled your career almost and, and kept you on a team, you know, or in an environment with high level success. Yeah. So I think, I think, not even just the success that I've had, but um, as a team, uh, it's really shown me how people can come together to set a goal and really accomplish it if your mind and your heart is set to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And the feeling of winning, I'll tell you, when we won that softball state championship, that was probably the most meaningful championship I've won Mm -hmm. because I grew up with those girls on that team for playing softball since we were in t-ball five years old and it was just something we had pushed for for so long and that senior class was like all my closest best friends and I was a junior Mm -hmm. so that was something that really meant a lot to us um and then just coming into the fall and after winning that soccer state championship I was like what is happening Mm -hmm. right how how did I just get softball and then this and then of course basketball was the next season and we got that ship that season I was like this is incredible right now like how is this happening but um like even even losing the year before honestly I think that's what really pushed it pushed me personally but Mm -hmm. I think that's what pushed my team in in the basketball state championship we lost actually here at the Ryan Center to um LaSalle and I think at some point in your life you have not even and I think I know you have to take a loss at some point in order to um, to learn from it and strive to be better. And I really think that's what showed um, throughout the course of my whole career, mm-hmm. right? We didn't have, we were successful consistently and improved even more at the end of my college career. And it's just something that I'll, I'll never forget. Um, I believe my teammates in high school will never forget. Uh, and I'm just proud, proud to have been a rebel, <laughs> proud to have been a rebel. So something, something special. You know, you were a senior when, you know, COVID-19 hit in a, in a global pandemic and you had, a, you know, a lot taken away from you and you ended up making a decision to go to the Taft School. So can you talk a little bit about that decision, you know, to say, all right, I'm not going to be going to college next year. I'm going to attempt to, you know, go to a prep school and, and then build off of that and then, you know, kind of tell the story of what ended up happening. Yeah, so... I'd say ever since my sophomore year, I actually got my first offer here from URI uh, for soccer. And I honestly, I couldn't give them that answer because one, I was 15 and I firmly don't believe in committing um, as early as that to, because in a year you won't even know where your life is at, right? So, and with me playing two other sports, I, I didn't know where my heart was going to be in the future and I still had two years left to grow not just as a person but an athlete and it was it was the decisions I had to make from say my junior year on was they were pretty tough so obviously I had some offers from schools and 
me being a very bad decision maker, not bad decision maker, but hesitant. I'm very hesitant at Decide. deciding because, because I just, I just like, I feel like if I make a decision, something will go wrong. Uh, but if I make the other decision, maybe it'll go right. So it's like, it's a toss up for me. And it's, that's something I've gotten better at over the years. Um, but so deciding to go to Taft, I'd say it's my fall of my senior year. So I was cutting it close mm -hmm. and I had, I still couldn't decide uh, what sport I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And one of my family members had uh, one of the softball coaches from Taft. They are, they had been friends, they coached together. They went, um, they were in touch somehow. And he reached out asking what I was doing. And I honestly hadn't thought about prep school at all. It wasn't even a thought in my mind. And he reached out and I was like, you know what? I think I'll take this extra year. And not just athletically, I thought the extra year would help me get credits out of the way, um, bring my SAT up and all that stuff. So I kind of made that decision, I think October going in or October of my senior year um, applied. They, I got in, made the decision to go there in April, not April, sorry, made the decision to go there before COVID. So December, probably December. Um, and then COVID hit January. So I went and was continued that year and we were all online. So it was making it even tougher. Um, I ended up getting uh, good money to good money to the prep school. And I was like, this is a no brainer right now. I'm going here. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to make a decision and that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. So then I was, I was working, um, I was working for my dad, uh, and one of his coworkers mentioned to me, he's like, have you ever thought about, you know, um, taking the year, uh, this next year to work and take some classes at CCRI, the community college, because I went on a Zoom with them, on a Zoom with Taft, and they said, we're not going to have fall sports. We're not sure about winter, um, meaning they're not going to have competitive games. Mm -hmm. uh, they were going to practice. But the thing that got me was when they said, you're not going to be able to leave the campus. You're going to have to stay here because of COVID protocols. So I was like, all right, my decision to go to the school, primarily academic, but with it is athletics, athletics for me to make a decision. So if fall is already ruled out, I was supposed to go to play soccer, basketball, and softball. Fall's ruled out, winter's almost ruled out. How are coaches gonna come see me? How am I gonna get seen? Mm -hmm. If I can't leave the school, how am I gonna go look at schools and make a decision by the time I need to? And so that was, that honestly was one of the toughest decisions I've had to make so far in my life was telling them I'm not coming, mm -hmm. that I'm taking this year off to do studies and work and make money. So I told them in June of this last year, not this last year, June of my senior year. And so I took the fall, I took the fall off. Um, I worked for my dad, did landscaping and took some classes at CCRI uh, to get credits out of the way. And honestly, all that was going in the back of my mind. I mean, obviously we know social media now. I just see all my friends at school and like having all this, this fun. And honestly, the thought in the back of my head is all my classmates from high school are gonna be ahead of me. And for some reason that just, that just like, I couldn't function with that. It's mm -hmm. like, what am I doing? I, I need to go to school. I was, I talked to my parents. I was like, if I don't go back to school, this spring, I'm, I'm never going to go back. There's no shot. Cause I knew myself. I was yeah. like, I, I can't take this much time off. So I went, um, I'd been training uh, with Kyle Froberg over the fall. Uh, cause I was still trying to get noticed by schools to be recruited mm -hmm. uh, his URI goalie coach here. And I remember I mentioned one day, cause I'd been talking to, talking to schools that fall. I'd been talking to a D2 school in Florida and, and schools more local in New England. And I was like, Hey Kyle, um, any idea what URI is doing right now? Um, I, I know they, they offered me a few times and I couldn't make up my mind those years, but 
honestly, my heart is with soccer right now. It's what I see myself playing. And, and I just want to see if there's any options out there for me right now with them. And mm-hmm. I honestly could not have been more grateful for, for uh, the conversations I've had with them and, and the spot that they offered me coming into the spring last year. Uh, I remember they, they asked me, do you want to play coming in the spring or um, so this past fall? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no brainer, I'm coming in the spring because there's a COVID year too. Mm-hmm. It didn't count. So right. I could get those extra, that extra time in with the team, get to know them. And honestly, if I decided to come in this fall, I would not have been nearly as successful as I was. Yeah. And I would not have provided nearly as much to my team as I did. So that's a decision that I was very proud of um, coming in as well. So that's kind of how that panned out. Long story to it, but uh, yeah, I'm, you know, you make a decision, you go with it. It's in the past and you got to move on. You can't dwell on it. So that's what I had to do. So you end up making that, you know, a very big decision in your life, especially for somebody that's going through, you know, a tough time as a senior in in high school and, and, you know, you think you're going to go one way and then you end up going another and, and, you know, you gain some valuable, you know, obviously lessons, you know, working, you know, we grow up with a lot of people where, you know, over the summers we work and we work with our hands and, and we put in a lot of hard, you know, labor hours down by the water and just, uh, yeah. and you learn a lot. And, you know, with that, you know, everything that you learned of, of hard work and, and decision-making and, you know, really having to grow up, you know, as a 17 year old, you know, making that decision and, and, you know, then you say, okay, I'm going to commit to roadie soccer. I'm going to come here, which is, you know, our backyard. Yeah. yeah. I always like to say. Um, you know, but talk a little about that that first, you know, that spring season coming in and, and you know, earning some playing time and, and you know, starting to define yourself as a, a college soccer player. Yeah. So coming in, coming in that spring, last spring, mm-hmm. uh, it was me and two other goalies. So one goalie in my class, one goalie grade above. And I – um, our coach told us who was first string, second string, third. Um, I was second. Uh, and I think it was our first or second game of the season last year uh, against UConn. Um, our number one was in, uh, Teresa, incredible athlete. And she went down, right? And I had been working. We had this preseason about maybe a little less than a month. And I, you know, the adrenaline you want to get into that game. You're like, let's go, let's go. I'm like, I'm good to go before the game. I'm like, all right, if I'm getting called on, I'm going in and I'm kicking butt right now. It's going to happen. Right. But when that happens and all I remember is coach James pointed to me on the bench and goes, it's go warm up. And I was like, I think my heart sank through my stomach. I was like, like the automatic reaction is just like your heart sinking. And then all of a sudden you're like, light bulb get over there and start freaking warming up right now so that was just it was a funny story but I got I got some time in the spring and and um I was very I wasn't it was tough for me because I wasn't showing the type of goalie that I could be Um, I was holding back a lot and you think that's just because you were a little nervous I think it was because of nerves and I was I was timid and I hadn't played competitive soccer since my senior year Mm-hmm. my fall's championship game so first game I played was UNH I ended up getting hurt in like the first 20 minutes um which I was very a little not even a little upset I was very upset but I think I think my nerves really took over that season and I think that's what taught me this summer to just step up um that my team is going to need me uh this fall and do whatever I can do to have their back and make them have their trust in me that I want them to have. Uh, so I grew a lot over the past year, to say the least. Yeah. I grew a lot. Um, spring season was tough for me, but it was a good experience as a whole as a team. Uh, and it's a it's a competitive level that I hadn't played at before with the teams that we had played, like UConn, BC, a um, few ACC teams we hadn't we hadn't played before, and we ended up beating BC last spring so that was a big one and it was something you know a lot of experiences that opened my eyes uh not just to the soccer world but the world in general uh so 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so you end up getting here to this last fall, fall of 2021. And, you know, I like to say the wheels really started turning for you guys, you know, a, a playoff berth, big wins down the stretch. And, and personally for you, you know, a lot of big games, a lot of, you know, good saves, but, you know, you also let in a couple goals and, and, you know, how did that all also curve to the learning experience and talk about the feeling of, of finally having some success, getting back to the playoffs and, and you know, doing something for, for women's soccer? Yeah, so uh, roadie soccer, women's soccer, obviously has been trying to grow over the past few years, mm -hmm. um, ever since Coach Jesse got here. And I think it's really shown, I think she's grown the program tremendously and uh, all we can do really is go up from here. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I had something, I was on a roll. What'd you say in the beginning there? Um, talk a little bit about how, you know, the experience of playing in the fall and, and you know, winning some big games down the stretch. You know, you yeah, got, I got gotcha. you. Know, you know, I got gotcha. you. So. Yeah, so once the ball gets by the goalie, that's when it looks the worst, right? So it just looks like it's the goalie's fault. And honestly, that's something that has made me – a better player mm -hmm. because yeah it gets through the it gets through the forward what's that gonna do gonna get to the midfield right gonna get to the defense once it gets by the defense that's when it gets uh oh right mm -hmm. gets by me gets in the back of the net it's like oh, all eyes on me right mm -hmm. funny thing i like all eyes on me because when someone scores on me that's when i don't let them score again so it's it's honestly something um something that I've grown with this fall, not even this fall, over the summer into this fall. And I, I just, I want my teammates to have the, the confidence in me. And I think I really showed that this fall, so. And, and if you want to talk a little bit about the, the heroics, the St. Louis game, um, you know, last yeah. of the regular season to, to clinch the spot. If you want yeah. to kind of break that down, because I know it was a very exciting game for you guys. and. and something that has really, you know, propelled the program and, and created a lot of excitement to head into the playoffs. Yes. Yeah, so I had been coming off my worst game of the season at George Mason. Um, I let in three goals and I, you know, you, you can't always have a good game and sometimes that happens, but we had the next game, which was the number two team, or I don't know if they were number one, they may have been one or two at the time, last game of the season. Right. They had won the a 10s two years back to back. They hadn't lost in, I don't know, eight games up until they played us. Mm -hmm. And all that was going on in the back of my head was this team is not going to score on me today. I'm going to prove them wrong because they can't come in here and beat us. And we have been undefeated at home. We we're undefeated at home all season. So I think my team, after coming off the loss of George Mason, we, we knew we needed that win. Um, not just for our standings, but for us to have the confidence going into the tournament. And honestly, props to Claire Ross. Nice overtime goal, but uh, Blur. yeah, Scooter, Scoot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she, um, uh, I think the team overall, that was just, that was the win of the season. And I think the toughest part, um, not even the toughest part, but I think the greatest part was after that game, the day after we realized, oh, we're going to play them again, except this time at that, at their field. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, we, we put all we had on the field in that quarterfinal game. Um, St. Louis put their hearts out and, you know, uh, soccer is, soccer is a game of if you're at the right place at the right time and it'll work for you. So uh, that happened for them, unfortunately, last four minutes. But uh, I think we had a great season this season and um, can't wait for next season because all we can really do from here is go up. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. And talk a little about what your plans are, you know, preparing for next year in the sense of what you feel you need to do better as, as a player. And, and, you know, you're going to be a year older, um, you know, still a freshman, though, technically on the field, right? No, you'll be a uh, – Next year, you'll freshman. start – I'll be a sophomore, second semester sophomore, yeah. So, you know, talk a little about how you feel, you know, you need to prepare 
and, and what you want to do to make sure that you become, you know, the best soccer player you can be, you know, on and, you know, off the field in the locker room, being a leader. And, and I see you on the day in and day out. And, you know, I know your leadership, you know, your level and the standard that you hold yourself to. So, you know, I'm really interested to see of how you feel you can, you know, keep improving. Yeah, I mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be to be the best that I can be, and I get I get frustrated when I don't perform perform well, which uh, it's not a bad thing uh, per se. But this coming fall, we we're going to be losing some some good some good players. Uh, Amanda Schaefer in the back, Tori Bike. Uh, we had Jaden Riley up top and Becca. So we were losing four solid players, but we have an even stronger team coming back. Uh, the experience out there with those four seniors was tremendous and they impacted us immensely, but it's something that I'm not going to say other teams should be looking out for, but we have a strong senior class coming back. And I think for me personally, like I said, I'm hard on myself, but I think from this year, I think I improved a lot, uh, not just on the field, but, but vocally, um, and kind of being there for teammates if they need anything off the field. Uh, and again, it, who you are off the field will show who you are on the field. And I think that is something that, that I showed this season. Um, and all my teammates around me uh, have a huge impact on that. Like I wouldn't be who I am without the teammates that I have. So I think, I think in a soccer wise, I, I, um, I can work on little things. I can be louder. Uh, I was very loud this season, but I can be louder. I know it can be. I got to work on decision making. We talked about before coming, when to come out of the goal, when to not. Um, but those are all things I can work on this summer. Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be playing some summer leagues, and and I'm not gonna stop until until I get better and reach that point where I'm confident enough that I can, I can do what I can on the field in order for us to be successful. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for the fall. I'm excited to watch you. Yeah. <laughs> excited. This number, like number seven fan, I'd say your family definitely shows up. <laughs> Mark Hutch, nice and loud. Um, let's talk about the fun stuff now. Um, summertime. You know, we live by the ocean. We live by the beach. Yes, sir. Faith is the jack of all trades during the summer, um, you know, at six o'clock in the morning, no, like seven o'clock. Usually we, we intersect, intersect each other. She's driving to work and I'm driving on the garbage truck. And we usually be at Tucker Town Light. It almost works every like Tuesday morning. Um, and, and talk about, you know, working, you know, you work with a, uh, you know, for your dad who runs an amazing business and, you work with some really good people too. So talk a little about that experience and, and you know, we'll kind of go through the, the progression of a, of a good summer day. Uh, yeah, so I started working for my dad when, I mean, he threw us out bringing pot and, pot and plants when we were 10. And I remember me, my sister and brother, my sister was 11 and my brother was like six, right? Whole family, family day on the farm right there. And I've been, I've been working there ever since, um, you know, this summer it got, it got a little tougher because, you know, I got to support myself financially, uh, get myself through, through school, through, uh, just saving money to be successful in the future. And so I ended up working for my dad. I worked in the kitchen at Jim's dock. Um, I trained, uh, this girl, this girl on and off and I was babysitting on and off maybe like twice a week so I had a lot going on uh, I was making good money um but in terms of, of landscaping that's I'd say that's my my number one job uh and it's it's hard it's hard work it's it's getting up early working from eight to eight to five eight to six in the summer uh not in the hot weather uh and it's it's manual labor 24 7 so it's tough for me because we have uh, off season workouts and, and at the end of the day, I'm like, do I want to go do this workout right now? I just did a workout the whole day. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you got to push through. And, and I think this summer, I, some days I went from working till, till five and going into the kitchen until 11. So 
it, it was hard work, but uh, it's the grind. You got to keep going. Uh, and it, it's not something I, I ever, ever want to stop because I cannot, I could not. I mean, I appreciate every worker who's at home and, and sits uh, sits at a desk. But personally, for me, that that's just not something for me. I got to be on the move. I got to be on the move 24 seven. So I'll do it because I because I like it. But yeah, like, like driving past Faith, you know, at the time <laughs> of the job, you know, I, I always love driving past Faith and, and, you know, our good friends Cole and Ace would be there and you know, usually uh, okay. his brother Mark. And, you know, just pulling up and talking to them for a little bit, you know, while we're both working and seeing each other. And it's just like, it really makes you appreciate, I feel like, the little things that, you know, we do in that sense. Yeah. You know, we're both out there working hard, you know, earning a buck and, you know, just doing our thing. And then, you know, later at night, we all get together if we have time and, you know, we get to appreciate each other's company and, you know, I feel like that's what truly makes our friendships very special because we're all extremely hard workers and we understand each other and each other's grind. And, um, you know, so talk a little about, you know, when we're not working, you know, what's going on? I know Faith, uh, Faith loves the water. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, something I love most about Rhode Island is uh, obviously the ocean, ocean state over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so growing up, we, me and my family we have got a boat um and potter's pond connects to the ocean and we're out there like every weekend i mean it gets tough with sports and stuff but we get out there as much as we can and even after a work day i i take the boat out and take my brother and have a good time out there for for half an hour an hour just to you know cool off um and yes uh coming into preseason too you know this is my home Mm -hmm. this is where this is where I live and everyone's coming from everywhere else so so it's a comfort for me so I, I like making them feel at home I like making them feel like you know they belong here and, and showing them where where the places are here you know Matunic it's my spot right across from where I live uh but um yeah i like my free time I, I go I go to the beach or, or out on Potter's Pond when I can um hang out with friends hang out with you guys uh yeah so it's a good time over here. Good time. Um, and I think it's extremely unique that, you know, we're one of two, you know, I think there's a handful of other, um, who else? Kyle Fish runs, um, you know, Bo Broody, Brock French, both play baseball. I'm going to see other athletes that you were at. Joey T will be on the boys soccer team next year. I know that. Joey T. Um, you know, so, you know, I think that, you know, we all do, we all have a, I feel a responsibility that, you know, this is our place, this is our home and, and, you know, it's our job to, you know, make it feel that way. And, yeah. and having, you know, you know, our teammates, you know, that, you know, we usually call, you know, our brothers, our sisters, and, and, you know, you share a common bond, you know, working so hard, you know, in a preseason training situation, you know, training camps and, and living together in a dorm, you know, to, you know, being out there on the field on game day and, and everything in between, you know, you share an extremely interesting bond and you know that's something that's unbreakable and you know when you're not on the field you know you want to make sure that they're having a great time too so it's always nice to you know bring them down in, into Narragansett or bring them down to Matunic and you know just hang out and you know go to you know the Matunic Oyster Bar if you're feeling a little special you know but also yeah. doing like little things going to Monahan's you know a nice slice of pizza or, or anything that really makes them feel at home and, and, you know, you bring them into public and, you know, introduce them to the people that live here and the people that, that work here. And, you know, it starts to grow that connection, you know, not only between you and your teammate, but for your teammate to be able to grow and, and, and you know, feel more and more welcome and more and more like home when they're here. And yeah. I think that's yeah. just, you know, super important. And, you know, doing like recruiting visits and stuff with, uh, you know, having these young high school kids or these high school players come now, um, you know, when I tell them that, yeah, like I'm from here, like this is where I grew up and they're like, really? Like, like how do you do that? And, you know, honestly, yep. it's just, it's comfortable. You know, there's no other yep. place I'd rather be. You know, I love this place to death and this is, uh, you know, this is where everybody is. And, and this is where I feel the best in the sense of growing. And, and, you know, I know you feel a similar way. Yep. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I want to, I mean, I want to take T Lynch's job 
I mean, whenever he's whenever he's ready to give it up, I told him I'm taking your job to lunch. You know, um, I mean, I want to. That's like. Unless, I mean, come on, it's the best job, right? I want to. I want it, and uh, you know, I want to. I want to coach. I want to coach at SK, and I. I just want to give back to uh, to the kids, to the kids there, and to the community, uh, to let them have the experiences, you know, that I had, or even better. So, I want to kind of provide that for them and you know be the best mentor and coach or uh, leader that they can see so that's something that I want in my future uh, may sound cheesy but honestly it's, it's all that matters uh, to you and your heart and what you can do so who knows where the future will take me but that is my that's my goal so hopefully hopefully T Lynch you better be ready T Lynch coming <laughs> Well, Faith, um, thank you for joining me. Um, of course. A lot of fun, you know, you know, hearing these stories again. And, 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 you know, obviously a time where I talk to you, you know, it's always a great day. And usually, usually we talk about every single day, almost every other day. Yeah. So sure. you know, it's a good bond. It's a great friendship. And, you know, for many more years to come with this. So. Um, can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be going to be a great time. In the last few years of college coming up. <laughs> oh, Faith's gonna be my roommate in uh oh we'll be living together in the spring, buddy. Talk about that. Um <laughs> Faith are, are living together uh in what's today, like December 20th, not today's like December 16th. Um month and a half. A month and a half, even less, like a month, month and, and a half. ten days. Yes, sir. So uh me and Faith are moving in, stay tuned. We'll definitely do a lot. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun times here. So. Oh yeah, I can't wait for that. It's gonna be a blast. It's gonna be a blast. Big Mo. Big Mo and Faith chilling. Big Mo and Faith, job, baby. So, <laughs> episode thirty-six, Rody Rumble. Faith, thank you again for joining me. Thank you. Thank Plus you. Your presence. So, uh, yeah. stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. What to do. Like, yeah, follow, subscribe, baby, yeah. at Rudy Rumble. First I want for sure, you gon' need three put motors. I got the body from Jamelis, but I had switched the motor. I got these badass bitches riding around this bitch, and they all the coders. I just told her make a story. I just bought all the Trojans. 